You don't always have to go to your local newspaper in order to find great articles about education. You can also go to supplemental magazines like um, Fall Living is from Vernon, South Windsor, and Stafford. And in this great Reminder News magazine, I found quite a bit of articles about education. For instance, Fall, great things to do with the kids. Um, it talked about how the different foods are available for the kids. Um, talk to them about growing and things like that. That's normally done in kindergarten. You can show them that what they're learning in school or what they're learning before or after school is the exact same thing that's happening in real life. So they're not just saying, oh, it only happens in school or it's only what the teacher wants me to know. It really does happen. And a fun activity I highlighted is um, to encourage the kids to make leaf rubbings or collages. This is so much fun. It can get a little messy, especially if you don't teach um, glue use prior to this, but even teaching that is not as good as letting the kids experiment and say, oh, if I use a lot, it's going to get all over the place, so I might as well use a little. And then if they use a little and they're very conservative, oh, I didn't use enough to keep it down. And the rubbings are so pretty, so keep that in mind. The next school-related article that I found was on the 12th page about dining and nutritional tips for packing school lunches. It's school season again, so um, this can affect their ability to focus, to learn and behave well in the classroom, and so much more, including the annoying test taking and that stuff. So the writer of this article, which it doesn't state who wrote it, um, was really good talking about the nutritional needs and taste preferences brought into the ideas of making brain food connections, foods like fish and nuts with um, omega-3 fatty acids are good for focus and support in the classroom. Um, you need to get the fill them up foods. So um, foods that are high in protein and fiber versus foods that are high in fatty content. Um, also liquid power. Don't give them the liquid, sugary, C-R-A-P, like um, energy drinks and that sort of thing. Give them juices that have actual fruit juice in it, not those other things that have sugars and may taste like it has juice. I know my dad drinks that. So even water or milk is also good. And then the kid-friendly presentation. If it's pretty, they'll eat it. If it looks weird, they might be skeptical, they might just throw it out. My parents wasted so much money on bag lunches because all I did was take the bag and throw it into a locker in high school. Yes, I was the one. I threw it in the locker. I'm sorry, janitors, but I kind of did it to find out who um, how long it could stay in there. I wound up filling a locker, um, maybe two-fifths the way full before it was cleaned out every semester. That's pretty bad. A health article on pages 16 and 17 talk about asthma and students. This is a growing concern in today's population, and my son, my boyfriend's son, has asthma, and his family loves to do fires. They love um, indoor and outdoor bonfires or um, stove fires 
for warmth and for the smell, the look of it, roasting marshmallows, but it can not be the best thing for his asthma. So in this article, which I've pasted together and pretty badly because I just realized it starts out on one side of it with parts two and three of something and ends with four and five on the bottom as opposed to through the columns the way you normally read something oh well um but this article gives five steps on how to learn more and act better when it comes to asthma um step one learn about asthma the American Lung Association has many resources for this, so definitely take a look. Step two, talk to the school nurse. Reduce the asthma triggers and manage the symptoms. Like I said, with the fires, um, the ash and soot can get into the student's lungs. Obviously, there's not going to be fires at school, but there could be dust. There could be other things that they're doing, especially higher up in the educational system, or if it's an older school, um, there's a lot of factors. Step three, um, schedule an asthma checkup. All checkups are important, but asthma checkups can help with getting the right dosage for medication and other things of that nature. Step four, develop an asthma action plan. An asthma action plan is a written worksheet created by your healthcare provider and tailored to your child's needs. The plan includes a list of their asthma triggers and symptoms, the names of their medications, and how much medicine um, to take when needed. So all of this is important, not just for the parent, but for the student to know so they can take care of themselves. We want them to be autonomous. And finally, step five is get a flu shot. Um, the flu can contribute to coughing fits and asthma. For more information, the health care line or helpline is 1-800-LUNG-USA. Another local magazine that I got another educational article out of is the Hartford. The article, The Common App and the Finish Line, is basically a how to apply for college. And it's written in a pretty humorous way, too. Um, it talks about the arduousness of applications and I know that you all know I've had a long time applying to various things it's so daunting but it's so worth it in the end when you get that acceptance letter um, you need strategy and course knowledge but the main things is that you need um, good grades you need good standardized scores tests, you need extracurricular activities to show that you're a well-rounded student, and maybe some volunteer work like at a soup kitchen, and last but not least, a killer essay, and I'm talking a killer essay. Two of the parts they mention are recount, um, recount a time when you experience failure. This is difficult, but in a lot of interviews, they will be asking you, what is your biggest weakness, or what are some of your weaknesses? You want to come at them with something like, my biggest weakness is I care too much, but don't be too over like that. That's probably not the best example, but it's a funny one. 
when my dad was applying to work at his current job, he said that he brings his work home with him, meaning it stresses him out a lot. But that stress makes him work harder as a person. And that goes for me as well. I stress out all the time about everything. But it tends to make me a more conscientious person and worker, student, every hat that I put on in my life. Um, another question is describe an environment in which you are perfectly content. I don't currently have one, but if I did, it would be in my own classroom. I would have reasonable amount of power to organize the student desks, my desk, my materials, um, plan things around mandatory lunch, recess, and services that students receive and things of that nature, but having that power comes back to William Glasser's choice theory and it's one of those five you know requirements so I think being in my own classroom that would definitely be my environment that I feel perfectly content in so I hope I gave you some options and some things to think about that you can find articles about education anywhere you look even on bus seats anywhere. Keep your eyes peeled.